this video, we'll cover absolute value equations and inequalities. We'll begin with the definition. The absolute value of x, indicated by the two vertical bars, is just x when x is 0 or positive, x is greater than or equal to 0, or negative x when x is negative. Obviously, if you take the negative of a negative, it's a positive. So in words, the magnitude of a real number is what the absolute value is without regard to its sign. Or we can think of the absolute value as the distance from zero on the number line without considering direction. In this example, we're asked to find the absolute value of three. This number right here, that would satisfy this equation because the absolute value of positive three equals three according to this definition. But also, if I plugged a negative 3 into this equation, the absolute value of negative 3, it's the magnitude of the real number without regard to its sign. What is the distance from 0 on the number line without considering direction? It's 1, 2, 3 away. But using our definition, it means it's the opposite of negative 3, which is positive 3. So absolute value is always positive or 0. So what if we have the example absolute value of x minus 2, subtract 3 equals 1, how do we take care of that? Well, we have to think of our definition, but before we do anything, we have to solve the absolute value equation by isolating the absolute value on one side. So I would have the absolute value of x minus 2. If I add 3 to both sides, I'll have the absolute value of x minus 2 equals 4. Now from the definition, what I have inside the absolute value, if that is positive, then that equals positive 4. Or if this is negative, then that's going to equal negative 4. And now I can solve two different equations. So I have x equals 6, or x equals negative 2. So the answer here is negative 2 and positive 6. A distance of 4 away, this is a distance of 4, and this is also a distance of 4. So that's x minus 2, and we'll just note where the 2 is. So the distance between two points is the absolute value of a minus b, a and b are the points, or the absolute value of b minus a. In words, that means the distance between two points on the number line is the absolute value of their difference. So for example, if I'm finding the absolute value of x minus negative 2, this is going to be the absolute value of 3 plus 2. Of course, that's 5. So I'm actually finding the distance here between 3 and negative 2. If I count that, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What if we have an example like the absolute value of 3x plus 1 equals another absolute value, x plus 2? Here we have to rely on the definition. So I would have 3x plus 1 equals positive x plus 2, or 3x plus 1 equals negative x plus 2, and that's strictly just from this definition. And now I have two equations to solve. So this is going to give me 2x if I subtract x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So 2x equals 1, or 3x plus 1, of course, is negative x negative 2 or subtract 2. So here I have x equals 1 half or I have 4x equals negative 3. So x is equal to negative 3 fourths. So my answer in this case is the solution set negative 3 fourths 1 half. For absolute value inequalities, where a is a real number that's greater than zero, so it's positive, and capital X is an algebraic expression, we know that the absolute value of our algebraic expression, capital X, when it's less than a, is equivalent to the statement that the algebraic expression, capital X, is between negative a and a. So negative a is less than, x is less than a. And when the algebraic expression, capital X, is greater than a, so x in absolute value is greater than a, that's equivalent to x is less than negative a or 
x is greater than positive a. And of course, if we have an equal sign, if it's less than or equal to, that just carries over as well. In this example, the absolute value of 2x plus 4 plus 2 is less than or equal to 6. Again, we always have to isolate the absolute value on one side. Subtracting 2, I get the absolute value of 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 4. Because this is a less than or equal to, I'm going to have minus 4 is less than or equal to 2x plus 4, which is less than or equal to 4. And now I have to solve this inequality. So I'm going to subtract 4 all the way through. So I have negative 8 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than or equal to 0. Now I'm going to divide everything by positive 2, or multiply everything by a half, it's the same thing. And I will be left with negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 0, because 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So I want to write my answer in interval notation. And you'll notice because I have equals, that means I have to include the endpoint of negative 4 and include the endpoint of 0 and also include all of the points between negative 4 and 0. To write my answer in interval notation, I have to use the square bracket to indicate, include the endpoint negative 4, and the square bracket here, that means include the endpoint 0, and this means include all of these numbers between negative 4 and 0. In other words, uh, negative 1 half, negative, 2.001, 3.9, negative 3.9999999, etc. So what about an example where we have the absolute value of 2x plus 4 is greater than 4? So now I have two different equations. 2x plus 4 must be less than negative 4, or 2x plus 4 is greater than 4. And again, I have two inequalities to solve. So solving the first one first, I have 2x is less than negative 8, x is less than negative 4, or 2x is greater than 0, or x is greater than 0. So now we need all the values where x is less than negative 4, and all the values where x is greater than 0. So in interval notation, the answer is negative infinity up to negative 4. This time I can't include the endpoints because it's strictly greater than union 0 up to positive infinity.